Thank you for joining our PLC meeting today. Today we're going to have a professional development session on Duolingo in the classroom. Um, of course, you already know my name, but for our video audience, I am Joshua Hodge, and I am an elementary Spanish uh, teacher. I'm an elementary school teacher, and I teach Spanish. So, um, Duolingo in the classroom. Before I even get into our agenda, in anything, I want to frame this around our, my personal vision statement. When I developed this personal vision statement, I had in mind what we had previously discussed as a PLC. Um, so, this says, I will collaboratively and effectively work with my colleagues to create an engaging preschool through 12th grade Spanish language curriculum and program that fosters global competency, empathy, and love for learning. Establishing itself as a valuable and respected component of a 21st century education. So with that in mind, of establishing this program um, that is valuable and respected, I have been thinking about what are some ways that I've been very much observing in my own classroom um, some areas of need. And one of the areas of need, uh, well, I thought of two, two different areas of need. Uh, the first off, let's go over our agenda. Um, the, we'll go over our twofold objective, which is the, the area of need I've identified. We'll talk about what is Duolingo, this program that I'm developing. What does the research say about Duolingo? How can we implement Duolingo? My hypotheses on what happens if we do implement Duolingo. My own study using Duolingo. My findings and reflections and the next steps. And the technology involved in creating this presentation includes Google Slides, Google Forms, Microsoft PowerPoint, Duolingo, iMovie, YouTube, and a MacBook Pro. <clears throat> so, as I was thinking about a problem in my classroom, I thought about two areas of need that I notice. Uh, both centered around questions. The first question, how can we accommodate for our students that have advanced Spanish language skills from prior exposure? And so just to explain that further, uh, I wrote down here in observations, I have noticed an increase in the number of native Spanish speakers in class in recent years. They sometimes are not challenged in class and they complete assignments quickly. Now we started implementing a gift and talented program this year, uh, but I still think that there is a more effective way that we can address this need. Secondly, how can we continue to keep all of our students engaged in language learning? And I say this because Spanish class has always been the first to introduce new technologies and programs. The Who, Quizlet Live, website building, YouTube, Google Apps were first introduced in Spanish class. And of course, I am talking about um, in, my, in my schools that I teach. And I've been the first to implement these things. So this kept Spanish class unique and in a cutting edge and exciting, but now all of these things are commonplace. They're used across all of the content areas, which is great, but what is the next step to keep things exciting and engaging in Spanish class? So I'm going to address both of these things with Duolingo, but we must ask, what is Duolingo? Well, Duolingo presents 66 themes and 329 lessons teaching 1,571 words. It's a free online program with interactive lessons to help students with translation, diction, and pronouncing. Students can take a placement test to begin at their own level, and this allows students to earn points, badges, and awards to unlock further content and use in the digital store. In the digital store, they can unlock you know, further things and buy little things for the OWL avatar, which they think is so much fun. So, what does the research say on this program, Duolingo? Well, the Journal of Educational and Instructional Studies in the World found that students who use Duolingo for at least five minutes a day, in addition to traditional classroom instruction, show greater increase in vocabulary, pronunciation, and understatement of grammatical structures than their counterparts who only received classroom instruction. So, if we look at this graph here, I don't really understand uh, 14 point scale, but that's what's on. And here are the students below. So red is Duolingo plus traditional instruction, and blue is just 
um, traditional structure. So it shows that Duolingo has um, enhanced their learning thought their scores up higher. Another study uh, was one based on surveys. Oh, wrong book. Um, and this is from the Revista Iberoamericana de Educación a Distancia. According to a study with questionnaires, students were more motivated by Duolingo to learn another language, and a majority of students enjoyed it. And it found that Duolingo promotes self-directed learning beyond the classroom. So, research shows that this is a valuable tool. How can we use Duolingo to further our Spanish program. So here I have some questions, some things that we could start to consider. Can we have time set aside each day for Duolingo? Could we have differentiated instruction for native speakers using Duolingo? Could we use this in our substitute plans? Because I find it, at least in my building, it's fine. Uh, there's rarely a substitute that speaks Spanish, so I have to leave very watered down basic sub plans. Usually just watch it here. We could have students continually learning if we use this in sub plans. Could we use this as a reward? Because students really like this. Can we keep it something special, keep it as a reward activity? Could we recognize those who make achievements in Duolingo, like announce, oh, today, like uh, have competition and announce people like that have created, made so many points or just want it out there? Could we assign it to them? Could we use it as a part of the gifted and talented program? We use it as a standard go-to after classwork is complete. If a student is finished way ahead of the rest of the class and says, what do I do now? I can say, oh, I'll open up your Duolingo and continue your program. These are some things that we could discuss later, but let me continue on um, with what I have to present, and then we can come back to some of these things. Um, so I am going to, I did implement Duolingo in my classroom for a trial period, and these were my hypotheses before I began. I hypothesize that Duolingo will further engage and excite students about using Spanish. I saw this in the studies, so I think it would do the same in my class. I also think all the interactive features and imagery in the sounds and everything in Duolingo is very engaging for young learners. Um, I hypothesize that Duolingo will increase Spanish competency among students, especially in the knowledge of Spanish pronouns, articles, and conjunctions. This is my favorite part about it, is when it really like focuses and has students really focus in on like using the correct articles of the and a or the difference between a di and a and things and 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 the and all of those little words I think this really helps students with that so, so that was one of my hypothesis, uh, hypotheses and lastly I hypothesize that native language speakers will take the placement test and score to a higher level that will challenge them beyond the case of the rest of the class so, here is what I did. I implemented Duolingo in my classroom in the following ways for a trial period of two weeks. Week one, on day one, I had all students take the placement test. All non-native speakers were placed in the beginning level. So on the subsequent days of the week, all non-native speakers began lessons at level one, while all native speakers took the placement test and began at higher levels. Week two, for the first 10 minutes of class, all students engaged with Duolingo and completed lessons at their own pace. And I have actually continued this into a week three, um, starting off class again with 10 minutes and using this as a new routine for the two, first 10 minutes of class. So here's what I have found. I found that students are engaged by using Duolingo after two weeks of using Duolingo, class students were surveyed about the program. Uh, it's very hard to see the words here, but I'll read it to you. 84% um, of students in the room here enjoyed using Duolingo. 4% uh, did not, that's red for the blue. 12.5% uh, is 12.5%, not doing the math right now. Um, does not, there's a nip. Um, the placement test did put native speakers at the high level of instruction. Uh, for example, I had student A and student B are both native speakers. They have both scored four on their standard enduring skills test. They also were our gifted and talented students. The Duolingo placement test placed them both in level five in the program. 
Um, although students have not been formally assessed as a result of du Duolingo, especially on the things like the little pronouns that I was excited about, um, a number of students have been using the program outside of school, and students have been coming up to the teacher, myself, engaging in new conversations in Spanish taught by the program. Like a student came up to me and says, do you like to drink more milk? And I was like, oh, yes. And another student's like, can I go get a drink of water? And like, those are things that I have not taught them in Spanish, but they learned from the program. So I thought those were really cool. Really cool. Um, so what are the next steps? The data from the studies show that it's valuable. Using it in my own classroom um, seems to be that this is gonna be a valuable tool. So here are some things that I would like to do. I would like to assess retention of content taught by Duolingo. Okay, students are apparently learning things. Are they retaining it? Can Duolingo, does Duolingo spiral back to help them retain that knowledge? Two, I'd like to evaluate Duolingo stories for use with students. There's a whole section on Duolingo called Duolingo stories, and I'm not exactly sure what it is, but I would like to, some time to be able to look at that because it looks really interesting. Explore Duolingo for schools programs. So unfortunately, I discovered this after this was complete, but there's a whole like Duolingo program for schools where as a teacher, I have uh, classes that I enroll my students in on Duolingo, and therefore I can progress monitor all of the students and help them reach content on Duolingo. And I don't even know what else. It's something that I would like to explore further. And I would like to have established professional development time for further exploration and evaluation of Duolingo. So that is the end. That brings us back uh, to my works cited, which these are the two articles, the two studies. Uh, but uh, this is what I have to present to you. I'll go back to some of the questions here. If you had any comments on this. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for listening and being such a great friend.